another episode of Far Secure Dental Podcast, where we bring talented individuals from inside and outside the dental industry. This is your host, Dr. Noah Liu. And today I have two of my favorite people from NYU College of Dentistry. <laughs> I'm here joined by Candy and Ryan. So, Candy, Candy comes from the fashion world and she has tremendous experience in sales. She did everything from the front end and the back end. And I mean, she led like, huge sales team there down in Florida. So with that being said, we have Candy here. And then Ryan, of course, Ryan comes from an MBA finance background. Um, lots and lots of experience with fundraising. And he does it for the right cause, and which is why he is so successful in what he's doing. And both these individuals, great, great people. Uh, they are right now with NYU College of Dentistry Alumni Relations. So with that being said, uh, let me pass the mic on to you guys and let's do a brief intro and let's take it from there. Okay, sure. So, I mean, you said it, you said it yourself. Um, you know, I, I'm so grateful to be where I am at NYU College of Dentistry, but I, it's funny, the path that led me there has been definitely a unique one, not like most people that work in philanthropy and alumni relations, but I think it just only adds um, to the experience, right? So yeah. I did sales, wars in the fashion world, which is surprisingly one of the least, most glamorous fields you could be in. A lot of people think it's all fashion shows and, you know, free samples, but it's it's a lot of work. It was a lot of work and really taught me work ethic and really taught me the value of building relationships, um, really taught me the art of follow up and follow through. Um, your word is only half of what you do, right? So um, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, all that mattered in the fashion world was, are you delivering literally and figuratively? Are you delivering your numbers that are set for you? And then are you delivering the goods and for the client, the way that they expect them to be delivered, both in quality, timing, uh, routing, packing requirements. It's, it's a lot of different fronts to manage. And I think that was really helpful for me for life experience, right? knowing that you're not just seeing one part on the front end of things, but there's a lot happening on the back end of things as well. Financials, you name it. And I think it was, you know, a really great setup into this world where it takes a lot of work to set up a relationship to then lead to a philanthropic, um, I guess, ending. Love and it. really it's the relationship building. It's, it's really, it's how do you communicate what the mission of the college is what your personal mission is. So sure, the college has a goal, but I have goals as well. So what are the two? How do they align? And then finding out how does this work, not just for myself in the college, but is there an opportunity for the individual to get involved in a philanthropic capacity, but that works for them as well? Because a lot of people aren't knowledgeable to the fact that it actually benefits you as well. And I'm glad to have you hosting us because You've been one of our main uh, examples of that, and I and I hope that people follow suit. Um, so, long story short, you know, obviously, we've had a lot. I've had a lot of success in this world so far in just learning the ropes, but I think there's a long way to go, and I think that the education behind how this all works is half the battle. Um, awesome. So I'm looking to people like you and Ryan to really help mentor me and guide me into you know, not just the dentistry world, but how does philanthropy in action, what does it look like? Um, so it. I'm eager and excited and I have the energy to do it. And I'm just happy to be here. You all are doing great, Candy. Thanks. So, uh, yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thanks. Ryan? All right. All right. Well, uh, Ryan. Candy was obviously a, a <laughs> great addition uh, to our team uh, a couple years ago. We couldn't be happier uh, about that. Uh, for myself, I've been doing um, development work, advancement work, uh, alumni relations and fundraising side of things uh, for more than 20 years now, which is uh, you know wow. a, a hard thing to, to say out loud, but uh, it has been a little mm. bit. Um, started off with my alma mater, uh, Fordham University here in the city, worked for another number of other institutions. Uh, and joined NYU kind of unexpectedly uh, a little more than six years ago. Uh, did not think I'd be working for a college of dentistry. You know, before that, my experience with dentistry as a profession was my my twice annual cleanings, and that and that was <laughs> it. So I really didn't feel like I had the the knowledge uh, base or skill set um, to jump in. But 
um, the vice dean at the time uh, really kind of pushed through the idea that they knew all I needed to know about dentistry, uh, but I could bring uh, the skill set of um, philanthropic culture creation and whatnot into into the college. And, and I think and hope uh, that's what we've been able to do over the last six years. A little bit of a, a COVID hiccup in the middle there. So it's been a, a strange timeline yeah. to have been here. Um, had a lot of good momentum, had a bit of a pause and a pivot in the middle there. And I think we are uh, right back on track without losing too much. Um, I really think Candy touched on it in saying the word mission, right? It, it's mission driven. So if you're going to have success in fundraising, in philanthropy, in alumni relations, in engagement work, um, it has to be about the mission. It's not, it's not about me. It's not about um, our numbers, the college. It's about the, the work that's being done and how we can match you, the individual, you, the foundation, you, the corporation, and your goals with programs and projects and persons that, that make sense. Um, the, the last quick anecdote I'll say that I think is kind of telling is, you know, you can't be one who's looking for the spotlight uh, to do this kind of work. Uh, Candy gives me her, why didn't you step into that photo? <laughs> photo. So this is, you know, outside of the norm um, being featured in this way. And, and we really do think yeah. and appreciate you for, for having us on. Um, but most of our work is behind the scenes because it's not in the end. It's not about me. It's about connecting you to the project, to the program, to the underserved community you want to help, to the veteran, uh, to the disabled patient, um, you know, to the creation of the scholarship in your mom's name or memory. Uh, and I'm not a part of that. I'm a facilitator of that, you know, a vessel to kind of bring that into the world uh, and hopefully a trusted advisor along the way. But it's really about about the person who wants to get it done and, and the program in the end. So um, so thank you. No, you're very welcome. Uh, my thing is, it's not about see you guys play a huge role. I mean, you know, whether you guys you know, admit it or not, but you guys played a huge role <laughs> in my part, at least, you know, bridging me and my wife, uh, you know, to the school. Because as alumina, you know, alumni, we, we did not know anything like how do we go back to the school? How do we give back? And the only thing I knew about it, honestly, was like those envelopes I used to be getting in, in, uh, in via mail, <laughs> right? And I'm opening them up. And I'm yeah, like, all right, cool. There's, a, there's something going on, right? And let's take a look and let's try and go and, you know, figure out what's, what's happening. And that was it. But when I met uh, Ryan, when I met you and I met Candy, I mean, it just opened up a whole new world right? Which we did not even know existed. So this is the whole reason why we're doing this is so that everyone knows like, hey, people behind the scenes can actually help you connect with the school and we can do something greater for the school. Not only always thinking about just taking, right? Because Tony Robbins keeps saying that, you know, the secret to living is giving. And, and I've been living like that for the last few years and it's, and it's, and it's been paying off pretty well. So, (laughs) (laughs) so on a typical day, what, what does a typical day look like for you guys? Um, you Ooh, know, like good morning question. to, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just curious, like just wanted to know. Yeah. Uh, if you don't mind, Ryan, I'm going to start because I think that Ryan, um, he is our fearless leader, right? So he's in these big meetings all day long. Um, what's happening at the college. He's, he's our source of information. Whereas myself as the workforce I think my day is probably very reminiscent of a true fundraiser um, where his is more Mm. bigger item, right? Um, So myself, it's, you need a self-starter mentality. And I mentioned that in my bio because, you know, nobody's going to tell you, this is what I expect of you today. This is how many people you should call, contact. This is what you should do. You need to come up with a strategy every day to say, okay, today I'm going to focus on this individual, these individuals, this, this event that, it starts with how do I find the people? How do I reach out to them? And how do I bring them back into the NYU dentistry community to just be there, to have conversations, to meet their fellow alumni, to come to the events, whether it be educational, whether it be re- more reunion-based to reunite with their classmates, or whether it be just more of a one-on-one to say, hey, I'd love to meet you and share with you some of the things happening at the college. Because the the fact of the matter is, it's a really big undertaking when you have such a big school. We are the largest dental school in the U.S. And our alumni base is massive. And, you know, as the only fundraiser, it's a really big undertaking to say, how do I get these people that have might not have ever been reached out to or have never come to an event? How do I bring them back into this world? 
So it's a big challenge. And it starts with one Love email, it. one phone call, you know, one Instagram message. I've done that before. It actually kind of works. One Facebook message to say, hey, am I going to see you at this event? Are you coming to this CE lecture? Are you going to come to your yearly reunion next year? I'd love to be that connection for you. I'm sure you're curious about your school. This school taught you your craft. This is what you do every day as your profession. I think it's very important to come back to the school, see what's happening. If you had not so great of an experience, to see how things have changed for the better and find out how we could almost bring your dentistry, your school back into your life as a full circle moment to say, okay, you know what? I'm proud of what you guys are doing. Or, you know what? I'm okay. Thank you for offering, but I don't have time to come. So those are usually the two outcomes. Come, be a part of the family, or no, I'm okay, but thank you for reaching out. And so my day to day is calls and emails and reaching out and following up and saying, would you like to be more involved? Would you like to be a lecturer? Would you like to volunteer some of your time to be a mentor to some of the current students? And then ultimately, the ultimate goal is to find a philanthropic interest. Can you financially donate back to some of these amazing funds we've created that help serve the greater good, like veterans, like people with disabilities that can't always afford our services? Um, we'd love to keep that fund nice and full so that we can service them and not charge them out of pocket. So we'd love for you to be that person to step up and help fund this. And then as a thank you, guess what? It actually really works to promote your own business, your name, or whatever you're looking to do to thank you by naming a wing, naming an operatory, naming a scholarship, whatever you've determined that is right for you as the donor. It's actually kind of self satisfying to say, you know what, that's now going to be the Noel Lu operatory for the foreseeable future. I, I think it's just such a great, it's a triple win for the patient, for the donor, and for the school. I just think for myself as my goals, I just think it's such a great thing. And I, I think my mission every day is to educate the general alumni base to say, you might be missing out on something here. So how, how can I be that connection for you? So that's my day. No big deal. <laughs> that's great. That Hey, that's great. That's where I think a sales come in play, right? Um, yes. But this I, is I so much better believe... than sales. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Because you are yeah. actually you are actually doing the right thing by making everybody aware and pushing for the fact that something you believe in so strongly, right? So if yeah. you believe in this so strongly and that is your conviction and you're like, hey, this is how it's supposed to be done. All I'm doing is I'm providing a pathway and it yes. can not only help the school, but it can help yourself. So love it. And it helps love a population it. that should be taken care of. So precisely. It's, yeah. And and That's it's funny. Main, and just one last little thing. piece. Yes, for sure. And the only other thing I would say is that, um, and Ryan has heard the story, but you know, the fact that my name is Candy and the fact that I, and I I don't know if I told you this, but my parents came from a very poor country. Um, I'm a, I'm so grateful to be where I am today because my parents came very poor from another country. They didn't have any dental, no education when it came to oral hygiene. And unfortunately, as a kid, they didn't really help me take care of my teeth. And I developed early childhood caries where I had mm. kind of blackening teeth. And so when I was a, a girl, you wouldn't tell now because I smile at literally everything that comes my way. But when I was a kid, I always smiled with my hand over my mouth. And I was really embarrassed about smiling. And I was really shy because I didn't want to talk. You would never guess that either because mm -hmm. I'm a talker. But um, I didn't want to talk because I didn't want people to see my teeth. And so when this opportunity came to me, I was like, what a fantastic way to use my sales for something that I personally experienced that could really affect who you are developing as a child and developing as someone in need. Now I can help give back to that community that I probably needed myself back then. So it's just, it's so Love full it. circle and it makes me super passionate about it. Love it. Awesome. Awesome. Not a bad way to Thanks. spend your day. Well, what about you, Ryan? Um, <laughs> so, so much of, much of what Candy does, I mean, uh, hers is, is targeted. Our office is, is two sides of the, of a coin. 
Um, so we do the alumni relations work and the development work, the development work being kind of the, the finance side of it, the philanthropic side of it. Um, and the alumni relations work being the big tent, you know, invite everyone back kind of pieces, alumni reunions, uh, larger events. But day to day, um, I think for me personally, what's so attractive about the work is there's not a very typical day to day. So week to week, you sort of look at, at my schedule and calendar sure. and it's uh, corporate meetings, foundation meetings, uh, funders, um, faculty and research. Um, and again, we're big, right? And we do research that totally makes sense. And we're looking at a new biomaterial to be uh, an adhesive. Fine. Great. But we also have a professor that's working on saving the coral reefs. We have uh, an entire pain center that just opened that does a lot of uh, gastro work. We have a professor who researches uh, nanotechnology and how to create uh, an opioid alternative. So, so some of the stuff being created mm. here that you absolutely would not expect is immensely interesting. Um, and then how it correlates into oral health or general public health or our Department of Epidemiology. Um, it's really a, a wonderfully robust portfolio um, of pieces and opportunities. And so those kind of outreaches and, and dinners, lunches, meetings, conversations, uh, you know, text exchanges uh, are the fun part because we get to kind of show off, right? We have this great list of, of things we're doing and we get to talk about it. Um, and I'll say, you know, you, you know, like, oh, you get the envelope in the mail and it says, hey, send us 50 bucks. That's great. And that's cool. And I, I <laughs> we want you to do that. Everybody out there listening. Yes, please send us your hundred dollars. <laughs> but for, right. for Candy and I in our office, um, it's not that we're not interested in that. We are because, you know, every little bit, you know, many hands make light work. Um, but the conversations we're having are really much more individualized. They're much more, you know, what is your point of passion? And again, that's where our uh, personalities or interests, you know, take a step back and I can help and guide you and, and be an advisor to you of what I think might be a good match. And Candy does that, um, you know, daily. But how can we make you feel the most about it? There's uh, a donor who recently closed a gift that had been in the works uh, a long time, and, and they finally signed the paperwork. Um, and uh, they could not have been more excited. And, you know, people think, and, and the, there's lots of jokes, oh, the, the fundraiser's coming, like, watch your wallet, and, you know, like mm. that kind of pick, pickpocketing uh, sort of piece. But from experience, that is very much not the case. Now, if you're someone who wants to, to guard your wallet, you're probably not our person. You know, you're probably not from, from, <laughs> right. from a place of philanthropic giving, and, and that's fine. Um, mm -hmm. But for those who do want to do something, being able to to take from idea and vision and bring into fruition and, and sort of force your will into reality to create this thing, whatever it might be, is a very satisfying, validating, fulfilling experience. If you have done you know, it's, it's doing well to do good. If you have done well enough that you are in a position to then turn back and help others or, or lift someone up from behind you or say, you know, I was a scholarship student and I couldn't have done it without that. So I want to, I want to do one and I want to make a splash. And, and I've been blessed to be able to, to have these opportunities. Uh, it's a very satisfying experience for people. And there's a lot of joy, you know, in that giving, you know, you, you're, you're giving away, you know, your assets. Yes. But you're getting quite a lot in return. And, and as one of um, one of our very generous donors, uh, Dr. Lou, you can speak from experience on that. And, you know, I think for you, too, it was a very positive feeling uh, to give. Oh, absolutely. One hundred percent. You know, like Candy said, oh, you're going to have your name on the plaque, on an operatory <laughs> and all that stuff. That's great. Right. And, and of course, we are really excited and really, really like, you know, privileged to to have that opportunity. But for me, it was more about like these are like side things that comes after like what do sure. you do to what are, what are we doing to take care of our veterans our our disabled population i mean is there anything that's happening for them and what nyu doing is it's it's you guys are doing great when i visited the center like i think what a few months ago mm -hmm. i was just blown away with the amount of care like i mean that amount of care i can, I, I i can personally say i've not witnessed in even a private or or a you know a dental practice so so you guys are doing an amazing, amazing job there. So thank you. I love the Thanks. fact that you said about there are people who are guarding the wallet, right? 
<laughs> and that's the kind of population that we that that we encounter every single time. Like you know, my friends, my colleagues, right? right? So I always believe, and 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 uh, I wanted your in, input on the on this uh, thing here. When you come from a area of scarcity, I believe that everything else in your life becomes more scarce as we go. But once when you start thinking about abundance and when you take abundance and you're giving abundance, it's just become like, you know, more abundant. But it's, it's very difficult to, to explain that to a lot of people. What are some of the challenges that you guys have with, with this kind of mindset? Sure. You know, there, there is often, and, and, you know, I think your thinking is right, that the, the, the plaques and the naming, those things are nice those who enter into the experience with that as their focus, right? And, and then it becomes transactional. Then it's, you know, it, it's mm. pro quo. And I, I'm, hey, I'm going to write a check. How big, what's the minimum? This is often typically the question, right? What's the minimum amount to get my name on X or to put my stamp on Y? And uh, I don't, I don't want to diminish those gifts because they do just as much good on a financial side. Right. Yeah. Like the dollar spends the same way. You know, I, I don't care if you gave out of 100%. guilt, love, respect, memory, legacy, all of those things. The check cash is just the same way. So I, I don't want to diminish any of those gifts. But the people that we most like working with, and I think the people who then in turn most like working with us and get the most out of it, aren't coming with that. They're starting from a place of here's what I want to accomplish. Here's what I want to do. I want to make sure that you can see an extra thousand veterans this year and don't charge them anything. I want to make sure we can, you know, add a, a social worker to the oral health center for people with disabilities mm. because that's a gap in care. And that could really facilitate not just how they're seen in the center, but how it's going to, uh, you know, take all the benefits New York city may offer. That's so hard to navigate. You know, we have people who have, who have doctorates who have a tough time navigating, you know, the system in institutionalized medicine and whatnot. So how can you possibly expect sure. average, you know, Joe and Sally citizen to do so? So having those sort of resources. So, you know, for us, the people that are that are guarded, as long as you're willing to have a conversation, fine. It is it is not a hard sell. There there is no arm twisting. You know, for us, mm -hmm. we're looking for the development of a relationship. You know, we want we're, we're effectively, you know, we're the, the private equity. I want the, the lifetime partnership. I don't want the quick turn. And again, that's the, I'm going to send right. you an envelope. You're going to send me a hundred dollars. That's great. But I want someone who says, Hey, we did that project and it was, you know, at a significant level. And what can we do next? How can I, how can I build on that? Correct. How can I take my scholarship from two kids to 10 kids? I want a, I want a baseball team worth of little St. Germain scholars, like coming up the, up the block on the, on the next go around. Um, and I think as people invest in these programs, you know, it's probably a better word than give, but invest in these programs, mm -hmm. they, they get dividends, you know, it's not a financial dividend, but it, but it is dividend <laughs> yield. So a lot of what we do is, is show, you know, I don't, I don't need to sell you. I just need to point, you know, Hey, you're interested in that. Great. Here's an example of somebody who did it talk to them, you know, go through that experience. Let us tell you how that kind of came together um, and what the yield of it was. And so the challenges um, are plentiful because people, people are worried. People have expenses. People have to plan. People don't feel secure. Sure. A lot of our giving conversations are in plan giving and that's excellent. You know, people are mm -hmm. able to, to think about their estates in ways that they, they wouldn't necessarily be comfortable talking about a cash anything today. They mm -hmm. can think about real estate. They can think about other kind of kind of assets that they could leave that can establish a thing, um, you know, maybe not within their lifetime, but they know that that can live on. And for somebody, uh, often people without children, they really like that idea. But then too, uh, people with children like the idea that, um, you know, the next generation can see their name and allow that to live on and kind of what they were proud of or the profession that they they accomplished so much in and really kind of keep their name active and present. Um, that That's a lot of the conversations we have. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm going to add a little bit to that. So I think, listen, I, I take all my cues from Ryan. He has so much experience and I'm happy to learn the ropes through him. But I will say that there is another side to it. And yes, people are guarding their wallets and they're nervous about 
you know, the cash conversation, but I, I do think that they should give to give. Yes. Right. But I also think that something has shifted recently that, um, and Ryan, please disagree with me if, if you think this is different, but some of the conversations I'm actually having now are a little bit different than that. They are create your own legacy. So some people have this ambition in dentistry and I've been partnering with the chair of Perio and Implant Dentistry at NYU Dentistry recently. She's very aggressive. I love her attitude. I love her partnership. And I hope more people step up the way she is. But essentially what she's asking me to do, and and I loved this vision, was I need you to educate these uh, dentists out there that are trying to become very successful and make a name for themselves. I need you to educate them that through this charitable contribution, and the naming of a program or a fellow or, you know, the naming of a specific, um, of the chair. I, I guess really it's a, of a chair, the chair, the, you know, whatever is going to support that particular department, that it's actually a really great investment in your own legacy and your own name to then further your success. So yes, absolutely everything that Ryan said. Chair, it's about the feel good. It's about doing the right thing, integrity. But I also think that it's important for dentists out there to know that, hey, you want to be the next Rosenthal, Tarnell. Well, guess what? They named these really big key item things, whether it be a building, a program, a continuing ed course, whatever they named, they did it in their own name and they created their own legacy. So every student that walked through the college, which, which let's be honest, honest, is a lot at NYU Dentistry, they're going to see that name. They're going to be curious as to what that person does, and they're going to want to follow in their footsteps or work for them or whatever. Whatever business that attracts, it's actually a really great way to invest in your own name while serving the greater good. So one of the things that we're asking for now is to name these particular programs um, to create that self legacy for yes, your your kids, maybe just for yourself, but for your family, it's a family name that you're putting your last name on this program for the foreseeable future of this program that creates its own legacy. And what better way to make a big stand in the world of dentistry than to name this huge program? So, so I agree. Yes, you should give to give, but I also think you're creating your own legacy, and there's no better way to become big in this world than to do something like that to to your point dr Lou, I, I love it candy's candy's yeah. candy's absolutely right so so I, I agree wholeheartedly um anecdotally uh dr appa who, who were you know so thrilled i wasn't by, sure if you wanted to bring him up so good i'm glad you okay. um and, okay, good. and his uh partnership you know on on all of our aesthetic programs uh, both dds honors and and the international program uh, recently renamed for him he, he anecdotally talks about um, coming to the school and being in the Rosenthal Center and seeking out and, and really feeling, you know, that that was such an impact. And so walking in every day into the Rosenthal Center only further energized and solidified his belief that he was going to work with Larry and, you know, they were they were going to build something, which, of course, then became a self-fulfilling prophecy, which he did and now in turn, you know, has named his own piece. So. Uh, to your point, Dr. Lou, that that is the abundance or scarcity. He went into it with a mindset of like, this is my vision and this is where I'm mm -hmm. going to get to. Uh, and now he is in turn kind of reaching back and doing the same. And I am I am certain uh, that once we open that and people are in that program, both internationally and, and with the honors program, he's going to have very much the same experience. I don't know, you know who it'll be. But Sarah I think he already is, is. going to come through that yeah. program in another year or two, and she's going to be him. Oh yeah, and, and say the same. Oh yeah, this is this is an this is a way to attract like future opportunities, not only with within themselves, but you know even with the students, with everybody outside the community. And when I saw that news there with uh, with Michael Alpha, I mean, I was really really thrilled because it's such a good feeling because when you see like your fellow, you know dental colleague like doing like you know great things in his own industry but then at the same time he's also doing stuff like you know with the dental school it just like kind of like gives you a, a little mirror image kind of deal right and you're like all right mm -hmm. cool you know if this is possible then anything is possible mm -hmm. right so it really gives us inspiration as well to even do better 
so that we can come back and do something similar, right? Mm -hmm. And that is our goal, honestly. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, I mean, what is more than a legacy that you're going to be leaving behind and as well as, you know, having a name on the school, also helping out all future dental uh, students as well as patients. Mm -hmm. So I just love the fact when I saw the news. I, yeah. mean, I mean, I was, I was, I was thinking I was showing it to Nazish. I was like, hey, hey, check this out. Michael Lapa, he, he, he yeah. got all this done. And, you know, like, like some of the, uh, many of the comments were really, really good. But then, of course, you know, there were one-on-one offs, right? Like, you know, with negative yeah. comments. But, and, and we just shrugged it off. We were like, you know what? Don't worry about it. Because at the end, this guy is doing exactly what he is supposed to do on this planet. Mm-hmm. They'll, they'll oh, always yeah, be, and I'm sure you experience it with your own your own success. There will be detractors. There will be those who tell you you can't do it. <laughs> oh, be yeah. those who say, ah, Dr. Lou's not that good. Why should he have a podcast? <laughs> you know, the answer is because because you stepped right. up, and you created it, and you did, and you worked uh-huh. toward it. And so, so that's the answer. But you'll always have you'll always have those folks, no matter. And, we always uh, have critics, right? Those I, I call them those keyboard keyboard warriors. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seriously. So. So, so guys, tell me, uh, yeah, what's in for 2024 with with NYU philanthropy, alumni programs, events? That's a great question. Um, you know, our our slate is uh, you know already coming together, and since we're the the academic year, we straddle uh, each time. Mm-hmm. Um, we just concluded just last night a great series, uh, disabilities um, care speaking series mm. called Unit Zero. Uh, we had two full day symposiums, and then we had sort of one hour lunch and learns, uh, four opportunities, four, eight, eight opportunities. So, geez. So we had uh, eight, nine, 10, 14 kind of speakers uh, throughout the, the whole thing. Um, and it's a great part for us to highlight and really promote the Oral Health Center for People with Disabilities. I mean, frankly, and people could disagree, it's, it's the best place in the country. You know, to yeah. be seen as as a, as a, a person with disabilities that, that needs to be seen, and it's not a secret. You know, we're not. It's not all oh, the best cat. No, we want others to do it. We promote it. We will hand you the blueprints. It is open source. There is no competition. Mm-hmm. We are not going to run out of patients who are so underserved to be seen. You know, we want others to do it. So we're going to uh, start a monthly. Uh, CE webinar slash nice. in-person series with that. Uh, so that'll be nice to launch. We're already working on next year's uh, reunion, which for us is, is one of the largest kind of in-person events we have. We'll expect, you know, maybe 250 classmates to come back for that in the fall. Uh, and on a fundraising side, we, you know, we have a, a number of foci each year. Uh, and next year, one of the big pushes is going to be our international students. Um, mm-hmm. Frankly, oh, wow. for, for our history, we haven't done a great job, including our international students. There were sort of our DDS and our PG students, and over here was the international students. Uh, and there's some reasons for that. The degrees are different. The programs are all different. Um, but if you come and you attend for two years, you're an alum. You know, whether or not that title technically fits, you know, a, a New York State definition, I don't know. But but to me, in, a, in our heart and in our office and how we're going to work, uh, you are going to be a fully-fledged alum. And... Um, and we're looking, wow. looking at all the benefits of including, you know, that that not insignificant group of people that maybe hasn't been folded in the right way. Great, great. And and what about you, Candy? What what's in it for you? Um, well, I Next do year, what, like, whatever are, are you, Ryan like... tells me to do. That's the truth. But um, no. But ultimately, I think one of the goals for myself, so expanding upon what Ryan is saying, um, and and touching into that international conversation is getting to know who those those people are. So that's my so for example, I'm communicating with one of our alumni right now from Greece who came mm. and did um the implant program for 3 years and developed a lot of really great relationships while he was here those 3 years and then went back to Greece, right? And you didn't really he didn't really hear from us again because again, like he said it wasn't really along the alumni communication lines but we're bridging that back to say hey you know we're changing things for the better here and one of them is you are our alumni i don't care what that paper piece of paper says tell me about your experience how would you like to be more involved with nyu and then i see the Mm. ambition from these international uh, 
dentists because they have become very successful with that NYU degree or that NYU education. They've made a name for themselves in their country, right? So how do we grow that name? What do you, what would you like to do? Some of them say, I just want my kids to be able to go to NYU dentistry. Okay, great. Some of them say, I want to be an adjunct or associate professor. I want to come and teach every so often back at the college. Okay, great. Let's connect you with that. And then so my specific mission with these guys, some of them are have been very successful, very, very successful. And right now my goal is to name the other programs that are considered the international programs, but we have reworded them as the Advanced Clinical Fellowships in. So APA named the Advanced Clinical Fellowship in Aesthetic Dentistry. There is the Advanced Clinical Fellowship in Implant Dentistry. There is one in General Dentistry. There is one in Oral Maxillofacial Surgery. So those other programs besides the APA still have to be named. So my still key for- open. They're open. So my wow. my okay. specific yeah, yeah listen. <laughs> and and it's limited. It's limited and it's a huge opportunity. So my goal this year is to see if there's the right candidates that are willing to step up and name these programs, create that same legacy legacy that APA is doing. And then be Love able it. to grow their name on an international level because you can't just stay. If you're in Greece and you, you, you want to be bigger or you're in Spain or me, wherever you are, Mexico, you want to be internationally known. What bigger way to get your name out there than to name the program that every international student will be taking will be that name program in. Mm. So my goal right now is to name all of these other programs and say, hey, this is a very limited opportunity. This was, you see what's happening with APA and it's only getting better and better and better, his opportunities as a result of the naming. I'd love for you to, that I, you to be the next person to step up and do the same thing. So that's my specific goal for this year is name these other programs. And come September, we'll have some. I, w- I, w- I would love to chat with you afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> so Good idea. In September, no. <laughs> we'll have some new, new stuff to look at. Uh, the APA Aesthetic Suite should okay. open September, mm-hmm. October. Um, a new patient registration yep. area, a new center for radiology, uh, a new oral pain, you know, all of that, you know, for, for those who are familiar with the space, you know, our alum or visitors, that first section, when you walk in um, clinic 1A, where patients yes. currently register, is going through a oh, wow. full, full, full renovation. Um, renovation is even probably too light a word. You know, it's it's going to get emptied out and Re- really rebuilt. Yeah, what's the word, right? Um, so revamp. It, it be yeah, it's going to be revamp the impact. You know, to have that greet you, I think is going to change and elevate, and that will too provide additional opportunities for you know that sort of signage for the other areas for radiology. You know, to to be in one one section mm-hmm. um, for patient um, for patient registration. Uh, it really lets us rework some of the logistics in the college, some of the patient flow in the college. So I think we'll find some efficiencies um, and and create a better patient experience, which is of course you know always a goal because um, they are one of our our prongs, right? We serve yeah. um, our students, we serve our faculty, we serve our community. You know, so so there, there's more than one. Uh, our alum are, are kind of all of those, and things. our alumni, there's some students <laughs> that, are, that are alum, there's some faculty that are alum, and certainly our, our community. Um, but I think that project will bring forth uh, additional opportunities, some of which we've already kind of mm-hmm. pre-identified and some we won't know until the the last uh, architectural renderings are done. And we say, oh, what is, what is that little, you know, Dr. Tobar space in, in the corner there? We could <laughs> be wish. buying, uh, but there will there will be more of that. And nice. that'll, be, that'll come in this fall. We'd love to invite you back to the school once it's all up and running. I know. I know. It's been it's been such a so many years that I went back to NYU when I saw you last time. And, uh, you know, I, I hope that, you know, we can make frequent visits uh, rather than just disappearing for a decade and then coming back after. <laughs> yeah. No, you've been so good about coming to all of the events that we feel like you really should be at. You've always you've made that commitment. It is now a two way street with our relationship. And I, I really hope that every alumni and donor or however you're involved feels that. Right. And I hope that you feel this way, that you're part of the family. So when you we say, hey, we're having this event. You don't have to think twice about coming back and having a great time with us because that's what we do, right? 
Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We appreciate you guys. I mean, you know, whatever you're doing, NYU is such a huge school with so many people coming in through that doors. I mean, all the stuff that you guys are doing for efficiency, for making the experience better, for better treatment, it, it all adds up. And it all adds up. Sure. And as a side effect, it just makes us proud, you know, being an alumni. Mm -hmm. So, so, so guys, so I mean, great. with that being said, thank you so much for, for coming on, on this pod here. Um, you know, did you guys have Perfect. any last uh, statements or any kind of links that you guys wanted to share? Yes, absolutely. Um, I'll start and I'll let my fearless leader end. Um, so uh, let me just pull up the link. But basically, you know what, besides the link, you can just Google um, NYU Dentistry mm -hmm. Giving. Um, it'll take you right into a link that says make a donation. So if anyone is motivated to support our veterans, support our disabled community at the Oral Health Center for People with Disabilities, that you can just go in. It's a secure website where you can go in and make a either a one-time contribution or set up um, yearly payments or monthly payments or or contact us to make a bigger pledge. So um, I'd say awesome. visit that if this motivates you. And I'd and I'd also just like to thank you for having us and thank you for always being one of our best alumni and how supportive you are on every side of the spectrum. You've been so great to work with, your positivity, your energy, your ambition. It's, it's really energizing. And I, I really hope that this continues in so many levels. 100%. It goes both ways, Candy. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think All it's right. been fantastic. I look forward to you know seeing you again in person, hopefully uh, in the new year. Um, in general, my message is get involved. You know, if you're not in a place to write a check today, don't write a check today. Talk to the students. Do a CE lecture. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. see what's going on in your local neighborhood. We are, you know, as, as a college, as a university, only as strong as our alumni base. You know, let us connect you with each other. Oh, I live in, mm -hmm. you know, name the place. There's another alum there. There, there is nowhere on the map that is not colored in purple. Um, so, so get involved, be engaged. And I'm not worried about the, the effects after that. Yes. I hope you get motivated. Sure. I hope you have, have passion and want to invest. Uh, you know, of course that is what we're here for, but that's not day one. Day one is, is coming back. Day one is seeing what's going yeah. on. Day one is talking to the incredible, you know, student body that, that currently exists in this school and seeing the programs. It is, you know, even if you're only 10 years out, it's not the school you left. It's not the programs you left and, and things have changed and evolved. And I think that's it's right across the board. That's right. So whether you are ours or not, I mean, happy to have you if you're not ours. You can be a friend. <laughs> you don't have to True. be a mom. But, but if, you, if you are, you know, you went wherever, think about getting involved in your own school too. Um, it will be fulfilling. This is not only self-serving. You know, volunteerism certainly certainly pays back. So for sure, um, go out and, and do something and, and feel good about it because it feels good. I love it. Do good to feel good. That's right. That's right. That's the message. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, anybody who wants to get involved, definitely reach out. That's the way to do it. It's not only monetary. It's also like also like you know what Candy and Ryan just said. Multiple ways to give back. Right. For sure. So with that being said, uh, we're going to land the plane here. Thank you guys for coming in. Thank you, Candy. Thank you, Ryan. I know you Thank guys you. are busy. And uh, we'll definitely get this going. Uh, yes. This comes to the conclusion of our Secure Download podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe. And we will see you at the next episode. Thank you. Thank you.